and the election and, and the ensuing, you know, results and, and, and politics around all this was just an, another added layer of stress to contend with. And so those students who were already feeling overwhelmed, uh, maybe leading up to the election, they were feeling even more so. It's no surprise that stress was the most common emotion associated with this year's election. Thanks to mail-in ballots, the vote counting process took the greater part of a week, adding constant Google searches to people's agendas. At first I was like, yeah, like there's no point in even looking on the on what's going on because of the fact that we wouldn't know the results for like a couple of days. But then I ended up getting it on my phone and just refreshing every couple hours, even every couple minutes, even though I knew nothing was going to change. Thankfully, election stress didn't lead to much of an increase in CAPS visits. According to Berta, the topic was discussed, but only among regular CAPS visitors. And we really didn't see uh, an additional, uh, I guess, increase besides the normal. It's safe to say that most Americans, regardless of political alignment, felt strong emotions when the verdict was called Saturday afternoon. Like was, I remember I was like screaming, I was dancing, I was calling my mom. Um, and to have that one moment on November 7 just felt like, like a celebration. Not everyone was quite as invested as Sierra. Third year student Mara Weiner saw the election as more of an afterthought. I really just don't have an opinion on any of this sort of stuff. It doesn't affect me directly, so I just kind of don't care about it as much as other people. For Emma DeWitt, Joe Biden wasn't the first choice, but he was the best choice. Joe Biden isn't the candidate I wanted personally. I'm like, would prefer someone a little more progressive, but I'm glad that Donald Trump will no longer be in office. I mean, God willing, whatever the thing he's doing with the Supreme Court. At this point, it's no secret that President Trump is actively trying to contest the election's results. This has left a bad taste in the mouth of a large group of students who believe that he is attempting to undermine the democratic process. Um, I'm very frustrated. I feel like Trump and his campaign is trying to sort of make our democracy obsolete by not accepting the results. I mean, everybody has their right to have their day in court, but I think at the end of the day, if it's proven that there's no voter fraud, he needs to just resign. As Leah suggested, the general consensus among those we interviewed is that the president's legal battles are ultimately fruitless and that it's time for a peaceful transition of power. I know there's a little bit of noise going on around right now, but uh, once you tune that out, and at least to me, I seem to find no evidence or based in those claims, uh, it's great to know who the next president is going to be, and it's great to know what the, the policies that will be shaping the next four years are.